Welcome, Gold Derby fans. We are back to discuss the results of the SAG nominations. They came out today, and with me are uh, my colleagues, Marcus James Dixon, Daniel Montgomery, and Ray Richmond, and we've got our special guest once again, expert Tarek Khan. Um, so what did you guys think? Um, a couple surprises, not not anything major, I don't think. Um what do you think, uh, Tarek? What was what was the biggest surprise for you? Uh, really, it has to be Mark Ruffalo missing for Best Supporting Actor, right? In motion picture, Willem Dafoe. I actually thought it would be the other way around because Mark Ruffalo had the, the showier, you know, hammier performance, which sag off and eats up. And, of course, SAG loves, you know, Ruffalo, uh, I thought. Uh, you know, it's funny. This happened uh, the year of Spotlight. Uh, the film got in for Best Cast, and and he missed uh, out on an individual nomination. Um, but... Um, Spotlight won Best Cast. It's funny, you know, poor things missed out on Best Cast. I thought still, though, that, uh, that Ruffalo would uh, would get in. So that, uh, you know, was a shock. And, of course, how on earth, you know, did the SAC committee, they 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 snub Mark Ruffalo, but then in supporting actress for a motion picture, they nominated Penelope Cruz and Ferrari. I mean, that movie was a was 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 a was a train was a train wreck or a car crash, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I have no idea what the voters saw in that performance. They would nominate her. I guess she has a you know a SAG IOU because she's never won at SAG, um, but yeah, but that was totally out left field and uh, uh, just a major head scratcher. Yeah, I was surprised by Ruffalo. I had him in second place actually. I I mean I, I never thought to remove him, and it was uh, Willem Dafoe that I actually removed to put Sterling K. Brown in because I knew that SAG loves Sterling K. Brown. I mean, he's been nominated. This is his 10th nomination. He's won four times. So I thought this is where he gets in. So now it's interesting for the Oscars because if, if Willem has this support and I still feel like Ruffalo has some support, I'm starting to lean towards putting them both in my Oscar predictions and maybe maybe Sterling falls out of that. But I, I mean, Sterling could still get in there and then it's it's... It's one of those other two um, poor things actors to get in, and Willem does have a lot of respect in in mm. with the Academy. So, the Oscar nominations will be interesting in that category. Um, Marcus, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I saw Poor Things late, and when I left the theater, I said I don't get the Mark Ruffalo love. So I'm kind of on board with the SAG awards here. Willem Dafoe for me was the standout performance in the in the of of, of those two gentlemen. So I. Uh, I'm happy Willem Dafoe got in. I'm really happy for that. And the big, I guess the big one for me on the movie side was when they announced Barbie as a stunt ensemble nomination. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even <laughs> consider Barbie as having stunts, but there you go. It, they love the movie so much. And that really does help it with the uh, the big ensemble prize. You know, I'm still going to go with my color purple till the better end, but I mean, Barbie has to be number one or number two. I, I was not shocked by the by the stunt thing for Barbie because I mean you know they are turning a doll into a human being that's a pretty big stunt in itself. <laughs> and there's that scene where Barbie floats down from her from her penthouse. <laughs> exactly. Um, Ray, another big snub, and I'm going to come to you because you're such a Killers of the Flower Moon fan. Was Leonardo DiCaprio missing for Best Actor? So, what are your thoughts there? What does that mean for us, Oscar, Oscar hopes? I think he's still going to get an Oscar. Uh, Leo is still going to get an Oscar nomination. But uh, yeah, it was a surprise. But, you know, if if you uh, you, you can tell that there was sort of a, a little bit of a little bit of Leo snub in the air. It's not totally shocking. Um, and I wasn't shocked to see, you know, even though he had his moment uh, uh, for a minute there, especially around the holidays, uh, the Charles Melton. Uh, was snubbed for for May December, um, you know I, that was a little bit of a head scratcher for me to begin with. So uh, you know the fact that uh, basically Willem Dafoe goes in and and Melton goes out uh, was not a shock. But um, yeah, Leo, uh, I, I would put that in the mild the mild surprise category, not a huge surprise. Um, I would have been uh, I would have been more surprised if De Niro had been snubbed because he I feel like that's one of the great performances of his career. Yeah. And Daniel, what are your thoughts? Um, it was interesting. Barbenheimer um, did did the best uh, on uh, this morning with the uh, four nominations for Barbie, four nominations for Oppenheimer. 
Um, so, you know, it really feels like, um, you know, Best Ensemble Cast will be the Cinematic and Box Office Achievement Award uh, for the SAG <laughs> Awards. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I really, I really got to think one of those films is on top to win. Sorry, Color Purple. I feel like if Fantasia had gotten in, I would, I might be predicting Color Purple to win Ensemble. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, we're looking at a situation where Danielle Brooks might be that film's only nomination at the Oscars. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, there just doesn't seem to be that much support for it. Um, the Leonardo DiCaprio snub was interesting. Um, I actually, the five nominees at SAG are my five predicted nominees at the Oscars cu currently, but they weren't my five predicted nominees at SAG. Uh, I've been, I've been bravely predicting a Leonardo DiCaprio Oscar snub, but, uh, I, I chickened out and, and predicted him to be nominated for SAG. Um, I should have put this five in there. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see who gets those last slots. I feel like four slots at the at the Oscars are pretty much spoken for for Best Actor. Um, it's just a matter of Coleman Domingo or Leonardo DiCaprio or someone surprising. Um, and another uh, interesting story is Nyad. Uh, both nominations for, uh, uh, yeah. interestingly, of, of the Netflix movies that could have gotten two acting nominations, it was Nyad and not May December. Um, so it got in for Jodie Foster and for Annette Benning. I actually, one of my few predictions that I got right that was actually slightly clever was I predicted Annette Benning to be nominated for uh, Nyad. Um, so I'm wondering if this means an Oscar nomination for her too, which would be bittersweet because I don't think she has a chance to win um, and this would add yet another uh, another nomination to An Annette Benning's tally without a win uh, she's going to start catching up to Glenn Close soon <laughs> yeah uh, quick go ahead oh man to say I think um, the five nominees at SAG for uh, for best actor uh, Cooper uh, Murphy uh, Domingo um, Wright um and um uh who's the other one uh at sag the best actor nominees i said i said cooper murphy uh wright uh domingo and uh um, paul giamatti yes, oh, that's it. Th those are five in for the oscar nominations i think the Di caprio is going to get snubbed at the at the oscars because he's not going to get as many as many number one votes on those ballots so i think uh these five at sag for best actor are the five for best actor at the oscars I do wonder though, Coleman Domingo could have had the Netflix bump here. We we know these uh, SAG voters absolutely go head over heels for Netflix, and and that could have given Coleman a little bit of a an edge that he maybe won't have at the Oscars. So I I don't I I don't think Leo's out of it. Is is I guess the point I'm making. I will say for these SAG nominations for supporting actress. This confirms Jodie Foster for me, getting in at the Globes and SAG. I don't know. I'm not quite certain, even though uh, Annette got in both as well, but that lead category was split at the Globes. Um, but for me, I feel very comfortable with Jodie Foster at this point in that su supporting actress category because it's it's so it's been so wishy-washy. It's been so all over the place. And Tark, as I a actually, fan of, I, I actually fan have to know. Oh, go ahead. As a fan of Nyad, I, it would just be weird to me if Nyad's friend gets in, but not Nyad herself. You know what I mean? Like, I think it should be either both or neither. <laughs> well, we've seen weird things like that happen before. It's like uh, like uh, uh, Kathy Bates getting in for Richard Jewell, but not Richard Jewell. Uh, mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be totally un unheard of. Well, there's people that have Margot Robbie getting snubbed at the Oscars and Ryan. Gosling. I was I was yeah. I was just going to talk about that, yeah. you know, and I uh, I feel like this, you know, basically SAG anointing her means that that she's she's got absolutely a, a, a the inside track for an Oscar nomination now too. Yeah, it, it, and it's pretty clear as we've just discussed that uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer are not getting screwed this award season, uh, you know, and in fact, I think there's a lot of sentiment for you know these movies basically saving saving the 2023 box office and you know even though in the past that has not necessarily been a harbinger for for oscar attention i think it is this time i did some counting do you all want to know the the totals of the cast members in each of these ensembles yeah oh sure so 
Color Purple is is the biggest ensemble. It has 12. Barbie has 10. American Fiction and Oppenheimer both have nine. And Poor Killers of the Flower Moon only has seven people. <laughs> so I really I mean, think some of these films kind of shoot themselves in the foot with their credits. Uh, yeah. like they, 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 you just need to give your actors individual title cards. And, you know, the more the merrier, because the bigger your cast, the better your chance is at, at SAG. So if you, like, Killers of the Flower Moon has much more than seven cast, like, it's a three and a half hour movie. It has mm -hmm. far more than seven cast members in it with prominent roles. Um, so, like, I You were in it like, too, weren't you, Dan? You know, I, I saw a cameo. I might have been, like. <laughs> I've always wondered uh, what goes into that. Like, is that an agent thing, like maybe you, you need a better agent if you're if you have a, a starring role and you're not it you must be something solo contractual credit. yeah because otherwise you know just the you know the the you know for for the sake of sag alone you'd give as many people an individual title card as as, as humanly possible mm -hmm. i'm leaning towards barbie in this even though oppenheimer could win two individual SAG acting awards. If if if, if Killian and Robert Downey Jr. are both one, I mean, and Emily Blunt. I mean, we've seen Emily Blunt uh, mm -hmm. shock at SAG before. So, uh, but there's something in me that still says actors are gonna do something for Barbie, and and this yeah. is going to be where that is. And I I don't have high of, as high of hope as for Barbie at the Oscars. I think it's gonna get nominated for a million things. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I think it really could potentially go home with nothing but best song. Song, yeah. I have um, a hunch that Barbie only gets uh, 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 the uh, the the nomination for um, you know Ryan Gosling in terms of acting. Uh, I, I I just I just have a hunch there. I think after today, I'm going to put Margot back into my best actress Oscar predictions. I've had her in. I've taken her out. I've had her in, and. I, I think currently she's out, so I'm going to put her back. I I put her back in this morning after after these SAG nominations came out. You know, folks, recall that you know SAG does love Margot Robbie. They nominated her for supporting actress for a Mary Queen of Scots, and she had no chance at an Oscar nomination. So um, I think we should you know be cautious. And also, how many Oscar voters are going to rank Margot Robbie and Barbie number one on their ballots? Um, so that's why I can see her missing at the Oscars, not getting enough passion votes. And um, so, yeah, Robbie, Robbie could get into the Oscars, but she can also miss. Um, but if I can make one quick note about, you know, best actress here in terms of SAG, you know, Marcus, you had said this the other day, and so you do own this. But um, as of this morning, Lily Gladstone, she's won the Oscar. Because I can tell you right now, um, Gladstone is going to win SAG. I haven't done my um, intensive um, uh, uh, SAG polling just yet, but I'm going to start on that right now. But just knowing SAG voters, um, without Fantasia, and I thought Fantasia would get in, but with uh, Gladstone, you know, being here up against four uh, white women, uh, the chance to make history uh, rewarding a Native actress uh, with this prize, it's going to be too good for SAG to pass up, especially after, you know, Gladstone's beautiful Globe acceptance speech. So um, Gladstone is going to win SAG, mark my words. And then she has a good chance of winning BAFTA, and then, you know, she'll win the Oscar. So the Oscar race now, um, as of today, I think I think is over. Again, Marcus, you called it the other day, but I'm on board a gladstone she could sweep in fact the rest of the season the oscars hers yeah i think i'm gonna put lily at number one i want to make my picks and actually i'm gonna put margo at number two and emma at number three but i'm 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 reminding myself now as i'm saying this emma stone i mean poor things got snubbed for ensemble but didn't la la land get snubbed for ensemble so that she yeah. she was able to win the solo actress award without that ensemble bid and it, i mean it could happen again but yeah, I'm not as convinced this Best Actress race is over. I'm going to wait for SAG to come out, and then I want to see BAFTA. It's going to be interesting. Emma Stone could win BAFTA. Uh, <laughs> and and if there's a SAG-BAFTA split, that could make things interesting. But I'm I'm not sold. I think it's definitely a two-person race, but I'm not going to go there yet. And I'm also going to defend Penelope Cruz a little bit. Tarek, um, I have her on my Oscar predictions. People, whether whatever people think of that film... People have been raving about that performance in particular, and we do know the Academy loves Penelope Cruz, and they've nominated her for films that did nothing else but showcase her before. So I'm I'm not sold on uh, Penelope Cruz being left off at the Oscars, especially in this um, Best Supporting Actress race that is 
all over the place right now. I'm, I'm not convinced it's over, that race is over either. I think Lily absolutely has the inside track for actress at the Oscars, but it's so interesting. A couple months ago, remember we were all talking about how foolish it was for her to be dropping out of supporting and to be going all in with lead. So, you know, uh, and now, now, now we're, you know, declaring the race over. But it's just interesting to see how 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 quickly sentiments can change when 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 a little momentum, you know, and a little wind gets gets behind your back. Oh, you know, race like Olivia it feels like Olivia Coleman all over again, uh, where <laughs> she seemed like she was uh, supporting. Uh, uh, you know, some people were saying she was a supporting role in in the favorite. Uh, really, the favorite's a movie with three leads. Sure. Um, but uh, you know, she could have gone supporting and won that, and then she went lead. Uh, and she ended up winning that anyway. And uh, she ended up being the only win for the favorite, just as Gladstone could potentially be the only win for yeah. Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, hey, question right now. So I know Marcus and I, we are convinced it's Gladstone. Um, anybody else here um, convinced that it's Gladstone? Um, just, just curious. I still think it's a race. Um, okay, you think it's a race? I, I still think it's a race also. Yeah. And then you think it's Marcus, you and I, we nailed this. We, we, you know, after the Oscars, we can come back and say, hey, we called it. So good job, Marcus. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I always like calling things Lux, and then I, I always am wrong, but I think yeah, I'm wrong. I also love Lux it when- are meant to be opened. And I, also there you go. When, I also love when people are confidently wrong, and, and we can come back and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, Dan, one quick thing. I'll be back, you know, in a few weeks before the SAG Awards, after I do more polling, and I'll let you know what I hear, um, because that, that could change things. Um, you know, every year I do this, 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 this SAG polling, and oftentimes, you know, it is it is accurate. Last year, I was telling people I was hearing a lot of votes for Curtis for SAG, and nobody believed me, and, and she won. Um, you know, the year of um, uh, Viola Davis at, uh, from Mom Rainey's Black Bottom, I said she would win SAG that year, and not many people were really buying it, so... Watch out! I'll do my sack pulling, but my my expectation is that Gladstone is going to is going to win its sack. So, but I'll be back to confirm that uh, in a few weeks, if you allow me. Yes. What about the? Do we think any other any other acting races are over? Um, do we think uh, Kill, Killian Killian has it for uh, for actor? No, I uh, I think that's still a two person race as well with with Bradley. With, you yeah. know, we looked we saw this last. I mean, we all, people get like when an award show happens, everyone just sprints to the to the direction of that winner but we saw this last year with austin when austin butler won the globe and then brendan fraser won the sag award and the oscar so i think i i don't think that race is over between those two either although um i think the globe definitely didn't hurt killian murphy and i actually um moved him up in my odds but uh bradley cooper could still absolutely take this home I don't think uh, I don't think supporting is over either. I Dave Vine is clearly the favorite, but I still think Danielle Brooks could slip in and surprise everybody. Uh, and Jodie Foster still has an outside long shot, probably dark horse candidacy here too. Danielle Brooks has to win SAG if she, like there's yeah. no other path for her. <laughs> She's not going to win BAFTA, um, and. I mean, that's just my opinion, but like she has a slim chance of, of of winning BAFTA. They don't seem high on the color purple. And so if if she doesn't win this, um, and especially if Tay Vine wins and it doesn't seem like there's any other option, then then I think we can call that race. And I think it's I think it's close to over, but I I'm not willing to completely close the book on her. But if Tay Vine wins the uh wins wins the SAG. And she's reading from a piece of paper. Does that screw her at the Oscars? No, it's over. No, no. <laughs> the SAG Awards no. also, I mean, there's a lot of TV voters in there. And how many times did Danielle Brooks win with the ensemble of Orange is the New Black? Yes. Many, many times. So four, they love. Actually, now that you ask. She won yes. four times. Oh, one more quick note about, uh, you know, supporting actress. Um, Danielle Brooks, The Color Purple, it got in for best cast. And the holdovers did not. And mm -hmm. The Color Purple, as of right now, has made three times as much money at the box office as The Holdovers. The Color Purple is going to be the more widely seen uh, movie among uh, SAG voters. I can tell you right now, uh, Danielle Brooks may be the only place to, to, to vote for The Color Purple at SAG. So um, I still i am on board uh, the, the Brooks train that she will win SAG and then she'll win the Oscar. I mean, really, for SAG voters, I mean, if they watch The Holdovers... Um, I mean, really, what about Randall's performance really stands out? I mean, it's, it's you know, Brooks has the, the scenery chewing, you know, scene stealing, just a theatrical, you know, material that SAG voters eat up. So 
Um, I, you know, I'm just starting my sag play now, but I'll be back. I can guarantee you Brooks is going to win sag. There's no way Randolph will beat Brooks right. at sag. And Taraji not being in there also helps Danielle because if they had both been, I mean, yes. I loved Taraji in that movie, um, but there, in other words, there won't be a vote split now. So it, it's just Danielle from Color Purple. Yeah, you know, I, I love I love the holdovers, and and I thought Dave Vine was really steady in it, but I'm a little mystified as to why she's you know considered such a, such a steamroller, why she's so easily won the Globes, why she'll probably be a favorite for SAG. I don't know. It, it it didn't come close to standing out like Danielle did in Color Purple to me. Well, I can say on my from from my standpoint, when I see the this acting lineup at SAG and, and looking at how the Golden Globes went, the only race for me that is slam dunk over put a nail in it is Robert Downey Jr., especially with Mark yeah. Ruffalo missing, who was my number mm. two. Um and I think that's the that's the acting race for me that is is completely over. And people have been predicting him since the summer when they saw the movie. And I was a little bit hesitant, but now I'm going to pick Robert Downey Jr. for every single award show going forward. That said, I mean, Robert I'm really Downey happy Jr. that Sterling K. Brown got it. Uh, I thought he was so strong in American fiction. I'm really glad Sterling K. Brown got it. I wonder if Sterling K. Brown can get that Oscar nomination because I think that, you know, we've got, you know, we've got uh, 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 a few a few secure bets in that category for nominations. Downey, uh, I think Ryan Gosling is pretty safe now. Um, uh, Robert uh, De Niro is pretty safe now. I wouldn't 100% rule out a snub for him. Like if Leonardo DiCaprio could miss, I could see De Niro missing um, uh, somewhere down the line. Um, so like, you know, Melton could still get in, even though he missed it, both BAFTA and SAG, the two industry awards, so that he's looking iffier. Um, but, you know, Willem Dafoe could take that slot, uh, you know, or, 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 or uh, Ruffalo, depending on who you think is stronger from that film at this point. Um, and Sterling K. Brown is right there now with this SAG nomination. So he could, he could slide in there, especially if people aren't, aren't agreeing between the poor things actors uh they, they might have so, sort of divided support and sterling might have a lot of passion i and think sterling way, has a much better chance at this point than melton for the oscar nomination yeah. oh yeah uh, but I, what's interesting then is i think it's the two poor things actors and and sterling so it's it's sort of like are you going to take the two poor things actors with with mark and willem um or are you going to take Sterling and then which one of those two are you going to drop? Because that's that's a tough call that you could you could easily pick the wrong one. It's it's sort of a 50 50 shot. I would say I mean, I mean, I would look to the to sag more than Globe. So I would say probably Willem. Um, mm-hmm. And especially since he's they're both veteran actors, but Willem is is even even more so. So I Willem would, has the more emotional role and, and Mark is more of, of a villain and. I think I think Willem is is in a stronger position at this point for the Oscar. By the way, who do we think is winning stunts? It the nominees are Barbie, Guardians Three, Indiana Jones, John Wick Four, and Mission Impossible. Barbie, it's right? Not be Barbie, right? I, mean, I think it will be Barbie, right? No, really? no. I don't know if you're. I can't tell if you're serious or not. I'm not picking Barbie for stunts. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's the apple in the bag of a word. When it's totally yeah. sticky. And also, they don't vote for Barbie for best, you know, for best cast, and they're not going to vote for Mar- for Margot Robbie for actress. And I don't think, not for Gosling for supporting actor. This is a chance to vote for Barbie somewhere for SAG. So I think Barbie could actually win uh, this category. I know it's it's it seems wild, but just because it's the one that's so different, uh, yeah. Barbie. Could actually- Everything else is a sequel, um, and Barbie's the only you know truly original movie here. It 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 does stand out. I mean, it's it's I one word. Know, the others like, have like twenty word titles, and Barbie is just one the one word. <laughs> I need an I, I I don't know. I need like a PowerPoint of what the stunts in Barbie were exactly. But I, I think know. I think I think Barbie could actually win uh, ensemble. I don't think they're out of the race yeah. there. It it could. Yeah, I would I would lean towards just because you know Tom Cruise and and you know his stunt work is so so it's such a headline part of those Mission Impossible movies. I might give that the edge. I'd have to go back and see you know if previous Mission Impossible movies have done well in this category. If not, I might go with you know 
John Wick or I, I'm not I'm not sure where I'm going yet, but my my first instinct tells me Mission Impossible. Barbie is going to definitely win Best Doll. However, I, I think she's got the inside track there. Um, do we do we want you, you know the, the kind of the snub of of Mark Ruffalo uh, was complete here because he also was supposed to get in for All the White We Cannot See for Limited and didn't make that either. So um, did I don't know? Did he piss anybody off and say uh, there's something there, there? There seems to be a pattern there, and um, I. Th I think what he did in Poor Things is, is is the most endearing, fun thing he's ever done. I don't see how you pass him over for that. Uh, yeah, Mark Ruffalo, he's in at the Oscars. I can tell you right now, he'll get the passion votes um, with support for Poor Things. So even though he missed it, SAG, remember he missed um, for he missed for Spotlight at both SAG and the Globes. He got in at the Oscars. Uh, um, so he'll um, he'll and he and Defoe will both get in for Poor Things at the Oscars. Yeah, I think he's still safe. Did, did we um, were we surprised at Brian Cox getting in for uh, for Succession? No, I I predicted that. I predicted actually before Succession men getting in. So I I, I sort of you know one was left out uh, of of the four that I was predicting. But yeah, I, I thought I thought Cox would get in. Just real quick to backtrack, I I just looked up the the previous stunt ensemble winners, and it's very. Um, superhero uh and and action movie heavy i mean it's not <laughs> barbie would be very uh off course for for a stunt ensemble win so i'm i'm, I'm not as convinced as, as you guys that that barbie's gonna win for stunts i would yeah. have a better shot for ensemble last year was top gun another tom cruise movie and then no time to die wonder woman 1984 avengers black panther wonder woman Hacksaw Ridge, Mad Max. So, I mean, those are the movies that have won uh, in the most recent years. So, um, we'll see. That'll be an interesting category. Any surprises in in the TV uh, TV nominees for for SAG? I think uh, I think everything I've, was a surprise for me. My score was a total disaster. I did very well in film, but my TV was a total nightmare. I was really thrilled to see Bell Pally get in for a small light after that had gotten. So completely screwed by the by the Emmys, where it only got music, um, and I still think it was the best limited series of the year. So I was glad to see at least Bell Pally get thrown a little consolation prize. I was happy to see her. I I actually was predicting Liev Schreiber, and he didn't get in. So I'm like, I picked the wrong one. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have the totals, the cast totals, if if you're interested. So drama ensemble, The Gilded Age has 34 people. Succession 18, The Crown 15, The Morning Show 14, The Last of Us 2. Hmm. And I believe that is tying the record of Key and Peel, which had two. And by the way, they lost to a 34 person ensemble, Orange is the New Black. Um, hmm. Comedy ensemble cast totals are Ted Lasso 20, Only Murders 15, The Bear 13, Barry 11, Abbott Elementary 7. Uh, and Jeremy Strong missed. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of a a big snub for for him. He was really the only main actor that missed from from Succession, which had an otherwise pretty good day. I still think they're going to take the ensemble cast award. Yeah, yeah. Denton can throw SAG now. Does he have a chance there? I know you keep predicting him; he keeps losing. But can Pedro now win at uh, SAG with a Succession? You know, actor uh, split. There, I perhaps? don't know. I have him winning the Emmy. Like, let's start there. Um, I but uh, he could. I mean, it helps that Jeremy Strong is out. I think Kieran is is a much more easy pick over just a Brian Cox than Jeremy Strong and Brian Cox. Um, so I don't know. I'm I'm sort of leaning towards Kieran at SAG. Succession has never won for a solo individual actor ever. So Kieran Culkin would, would make history. So would Sarah Snook if she won. Um, I think at this point I'm going to pick Pedro, but we'll see what happens at the Emmys in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm going to, especially <laughs> since voting hasn't happened, uh, you know, for the SAG winners yet. The SAG winners will get to, or SAG voters will get to see uh, mm -hmm. who wins the Emmy. They've already seen who wins the Golden Globe. Uh, and that was Kieran. Uh, so if, if the goal, if the Emmy goes to Kieran, I feel like the, the vote split won't happen and the uh, SAG voters will follow the leader. 
-hmm. Also, you know what I missed? And we're doing this right after these nominations came out. So like the, not everything is, is burnt into my brain yet, but I missed Matthew McFadden is nominated, even though Jeremy Strong's nom not. So there is a, a triple split. Uh, so, so maybe I will favor Pedro there, but what about Gilded Age getting into drama ensemble? That was a, that was a surprise. It not was a surprise to me. Some some yeah. people predicted it, so good for them. But I I did not see that one coming. Um, and drama series actress Jennifer Aniston in for the morning show. Reese Witherspoon out, but I don't think this was too much of a surprise. We got Jennifer Aniston, Elizabeth Debicki, Bella Ramsey, Carrie Russell, Sarah Snook. That seems pretty par for the course. I think. Who's winning? Yeah. I think I think Sarah. She just won the Globe. Everyone loves her and. You know, she yeah, I think she has the best season ever for her character. Uh, I'm gonna make one prediction here, if I may. Watch out for Jennifer Aniston. Um, you know, she's loved, you know, uh, Ed Sag, and she's been around, you know, for decades. And people are still watching, you know, Friends. Don't under underestimate her. You know, she won, you know, four years ago for the morning show. And also, too, this is gonna be a factor. Uh, Matthew Perry's death. Uh, chance to see Aniston uh. go by the stage, accept an award, and pay tribute to Matthew Perry. That may be irresistible to a you know to to SAG voters. So watch out for Aniston there. She could be a real threat. And to Vicky, I mean, people, SAG loves the crown as as well. Um, so, and you know, Carrie Russell could be a dark horse too. Um, she's so good in that show. I was glad to see her get in. That wasn't a guarantee. Um, but yeah, it's probably Sarah. On the comedy side, I feel like we really sort of missed the boat for the love for Barry. Barry did very well, um, and at least on on my part, I didn't have Barry getting in um, quite as many places as it did. I don't think I had it in for ensemble. Um, so, any surprises for you in comedy? I think I had Jury Duty getting in there, but yeah, Jury Duty got completely completely snubbed here across the board. Those actors I, just aren't known. Like they don't they don't have any they don't have any Hollywood friends to help them out. I thought James Marsden would have. I, I'm surprised right. he didn't get in. Do we think um, Comedy Ensemble will go to Ted Lasso or The Bear? That the seems bear. like the big race of the year. I feel like it's The Bear. I the think it's got all the best with The Bear right now. Because it's for season even two. If, even season if Ted Lasso two. wins the Emmy, I feel like The Bear is, you know, if, if Emmy voting had happened in, say, December or January, uh, The Bear would be winning the Emmy for sure. Um, uh, it could still win ha with the Emmy voting uh, having happened in August. I was uh, going to say a lot of the a lot of the uh, Emmy voting happened right when the beer was when season two uh, yeah. when when all the all the the people going all over themselves for the beer in season two is happening. So people will be voting on season one for the beer based on season two. I want to give a shout out to David Buchanan, one of our contributors, who's who's great at these predictions and um he pu we published an article of his yesterday last minutes of him saying watch out for tony shalhoub in mr monk's last case they love him he's gonna get in and sure enough here he is up for best tv movie limited series actor so shout out to david for for that bold and correct um uh, uh, mm -hmm. and um they've also got matt bomer Bella Travelers, John Ham Fargo, David Oyelowo for Lam and Bass Reeves, and Stephen Yun for Beef. And I think Beef is sort of steamrolling. I, you know, it's that's, it would be a yeah. surprise if 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 Stephen or Allie lost. Yeah, I think the safe bet is to just go with both of the prime beef. Did you know what? Did anyone pick Uzu Aduba? I looked at her and I was like, I know. Uh, I, I, I think I did. I, I, <laughs> I was considering her for a while. I'm pretty sure I left her in uh, my my five. I didn't I have Catherine Hahn and Belle Pally. Uh, I knew she was going to get in, but I just didn't know who to take out. And I didn't realize that there were so many people I could have taken out because mm -hmm. I was so off base in this. I think I only got, well, I got Allie, Catherine, and Brie. So I did not get Uzu or Belle Pally. The pain, pain, painkiller was is a terrific show. It actually didn't get nearly as much love as it should have, and uh, she's a powerhouse. Well, I don't know any any last thoughts about the film or TV or I think it's a good group of nominees. It should be interesting. It makes the the race a little 
fun. We we love when the guilds and the industry start chiming in with with things because it, it changes the course of the race. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm, re I'm really excited about the best ensemble film this year. I, I I've got my heart set on one, but I could really see another one winning. It's it's gonna come down to the wire. I'm curious to see what all of Tarek's voters that he talks to have to say. Yeah, you know, one quick note, my expectation actually is that Oppenheimer will take a best casted SAG, and that is because um, Barbie and The Color Purple, the two, you know, uh, female century casts, I think will will cancel each other out. Uh, so I think Oppenheimer most likely will take it. I don't think Killers is a real threat at all. So uh, I would give the edge to Oppenheimer, but I'll, I'll do my polling and see uh, see what I come up with. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in a few weeks to uh, let everyone know. All right. Well, thanks, Excellent. everyone. We'll wrap that up for today and go make your SAG Awards predictions. Um, that should be live on our site by the time this is published. So, um, and, and good luck to everyone with, with your final SAG predictions.